Hello, my name's Liz and in this lesson I want to take a look at how to deal with IELTS reading true, false, not given questions and also the yes, no, not given questions. It's the same technique for both. In this lesson we're going to look at what these questions require you to do. We'll look at the difference between true, false, not given and yes, no, not given. And then we will look at the difference between each of the answers. So what the difference is between an answer that is true, an answer that is false and an answer that is not given. So we'll do some practice and I will explain how you can see the difference for the answers. Um, after that, there's a lot of tips to give you so that you can be more successful with this type of reading question. And at the end, I will give you some links so that you can practice this type of reading question for free. So let's start with the first question. What do we have to do for these types of questions? Here is an example of true, false, not given questions. You can see here, this would be your reading passage, your paper with the article that you need to read. And there will be questions. Each question is a statement. So for example, all people are influenced by media. You need to look at that statement. You need to read through the passage and you need to decide if this information is in the passage. If you can find the information in the passage, then the answer is true. It's true, the information is in the passage. If the information in the passage is opposite to the statement, then it's false. And if the information cannot be found, you've read through your passage and you cannot find this information, your answer is not given. Now, that's the basic requirement of this question. Let's have a look at the difference between true, false, not given and yes, no, not given. The true, false, not given questions are all about factual information in the passage. So it's not about opinions, it's about fact. True means that the statement in your question agrees with the information in the passage. False, the statement in the question contradicts the information in the passage. Contradicts means it's the opposite meaning. And not given means there is no information on this. So what's the difference with yes, no, not given? Let's have a look. The yes, no, not given questions are all about the writer's opinion. So it's not about the facts, but about what the writer thinks. So this is often called reading between the lines, trying to understand what the writer is trying to tell you about their opinion. If the answer is yes, it means that the statement in your question agrees with the claims of the writer. If it's no, it means the statement is opposite, it contradicts the claims of the writer. And not given means it is impossible to say what the writer thinks about this. Now the technique to tackling, to dealing with true, false, not given and yes, no, not given is exactly the same. And in this lesson, we're going to learn how to look at true, false, not given and all these tips you can use for both types of questions. And also this information here, you don't need to remember. It will be written on your question paper. So don't worry about that. Now let's have a look at some true, false, not given questions. And I will explain to you why the answers are true, false or not given. Here is a typical example of a question for true, false, not given. This is the information in the reading passage. The majority of people who graduated university found it difficult to get a job. And the question, the statement in the question 
is after finishing their tertiary education, all people had difficulties to find employment. Now the first step that you need to take is to look more closely at the statement. Don't try to find or understand your answer until you have analysed the statement more. So the first thing we're going to do is look at some vocabulary in the statement. After finishing their tertiary education, so here we've got tertiary education. What does that mean? Well, tertiary education means university education. So after finishing their university education, all people had difficulties to find employment. And of course, employment means work or a job. So now we can take a look and we can see that it says here that the people who graduated university, graduated means that they have finished their university. And that's the same here, after finishing their university education. And it said the majority of people found it difficult to get a job. And you say people had difficulties to find employment. So we have a lot of similarities. Now, many students can see that a lot of the information is matching and immediately they decide the answer is true. But you need to be more careful than that. It's not about matching keywords. It's about matching all of the meaning. So here we're going to take a look at this. The word all. All means 100% of the people. So after finishing their university education, 100% of those people had difficulties to find work. That's the actual meaning of the statement. Now let's have a look here. And here we've got the majority. This does not mean everyone. It means most of them. So now we have a mismatch. It doesn't match. And remember that the false means it's the opposite information. And of course, we can see here, it's not a match. It's not the same. It is opposite. If it's, is it all people or not all people? And majority means not all people. So the answer to this one is false. The information in the statement does not match. It's opposite to the information in the passage. Some of the words are similar, but the whole statement does not have the same meaning. So that's one example. Let's have a look at another. Here is the next question. In the passage, it says that the charity raises money to pay for education and the daily needs of poor people. And the information in the question, the statement, is the charity spends more of the money raised on schooling for poor people than on their daily requirements. So again, we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at the statement. So we've got um, spending money, and this is money that has been raised on schooling. And of course, schooling means education than on daily, everyday requirements. And requirements means needs. So again, in this statement, we have a lot of similar words. The charity raises money to pay for education, schooling, and the daily needs, the daily requirements of poor people. So we have a lot of matching information. Again, what do you think? True, false, or not given? Well, we need to look more deeply at the statement. Now remember, if the answer is true, it means that the information matches. And if the answer is false, it means this is the opposite information. Now, we should prepare the opposite information to make sure that we can decide if it's true or false. 
So they say the charity spends more. Aha! Uh -huh. Suddenly we find a word here. More of the money raised for schooling than on daily requirements. What would be the opposite? Well, the opposite meaning would be less. The charity spends less money on schooling than on daily needs. That would be the opposite. So now we need to look at the statement. We need to know, does the charity spend more money on education or less money on education compared to daily needs? And if we look at this sentence, we've got information about education. We have information about daily needs, but it doesn't say which one the charity spends most of their money on. Which one is more and which one is less? So that means even though we have a lot of matching information, we do not find any matching information and we do not find any opposite information either. In fact, the comparison between the money on schooling and daily requirements isn't there. So the answer for this is, have you got it? Not given. Let's have a look at one more. And here is the last practice question before I give you some very useful tips to help you improve your true, false, not given and yes, no, not given questions. So this is a true, false, not given practice. This is the information in the passage. Just over 400 million acres of land is being used for agriculture in America. And the question. At present in America, about 400 million acres of land is allocated for agriculture. So you can see some similarities and a few differences. Let's have a look further at the information in this statement. We've got here a time phrase, at present, right now, at this moment, currently. In America, we've got about 400 million acres of land is allocated. Now, allocated means it's given to be used for. So that is very similar to this. Used for, given to be used for, and agriculture, well, that's exactly the same. So we have similarities. We've got in America, 400 million acres is used for agriculture. Now let's look at the differences. The differences is the time phrase here and the word about. So do you think it is true, false or not given? Well, let's have a look further. Firstly, the time phrase. There's no time phrase here. However, is there another way to know whether we're talking about the present or not? Yes, there is. And that is grammar. Your grammar tense will tell you what time period we're talking about. Is it the present or the past? And you can see here, is being used for. So here we've got a present continuous. So that means present continuous. We use that tense when we're talking about now, at the moment, at present. So you can see it's not about just matching words. It's about matching meaning. And the meaning can be hidden in the grammar. So you have to pay attention to everything in the statement and in the passage. Now let's look. So that's the same. Now let's look at the next one, which is about. In the passage, they say just over. And in the statement, they say about. Now, before you tell me that it's not exactly the same, we need to think about the meaning of true and the meaning of false. Now, the meaning of true is that it matches. The meaning of false, remember, it doesn't mean that it doesn't match. It means it's the opposite information, contrary. Now, the word about means close to, nearly, a little bit over, a little bit under 400 million acres. 
The opposite would be, it is not close to 400 million acres. In fact, it's a lot more or it's a lot less, but it's not close to 400 million acres. That's the opposite meaning. So now we take a look more carefully and we can see actually that information does match because about has the same meaning, just over, just under, and here we've got a match, just over 400 million acres. So the answer for this one is true. So you can see there are many different traps and difficulties that you can have with these types of questions. So let me give you some very useful and important tips now to help you get your questions right. Tip number one. The first tip is to spend time analysing and reading the question statement. Many students jump to the question, they read the statement quickly and try to find the answer. That's not a good technique, I wouldn't recommend it. Go to the question and spend some time reading it, looking at the words, looking at the meaning behind it, then try to find the answer. The more time you spend analysing the statement, the more likely you are to get the right answer. The next one, number two, you are not trying to match key words. You don't look at the statement, find key words and decide that's true or that's a yes answer. Because we're not interested in matching keywords, we're interested in matching meaning. So understanding the statement, understanding the passage more. Number three, paraphrases, of course, vocabulary. IELTS is very big on paraphrasing and using a range of different language for the same meaning. So that means when you look at your statement, you do need to think about possible paraphrases and that will help you identify where the answer is and to actually get the right answer. Number four, look out for common traps. There are common traps. Of course, one of the common traps you already know, and that's comparisons. If you see a comparative sentence in your question, more or less than, make sure you also find a comparison in the passage, because if it's not, it will probably be not given. Also look for these types of words. If they say all and the question says some, that's not a match. If they say the majority and the question says some, that's also not a match. So this is really testing your ability to understand the exact difference and the exact meaning of words. Let's have a look at some more tips. Tip number five, the true false not given and the yes no not given questions use the same technique. So everything we learned today in this lesson for the true false not given you can use for yes no not given. Number six, the answers come in order. This is such an important tip. What does it mean? Well, it means that the answer to question number one will come here, for example, and the answer to question number two will follow that, it's in order. And the answer to question number three will come after that, and question four will come after that. So each question follows the order of information in the passage. That means that you should always start with question number one. Find question number one first, and you know that question number two will follow that. It also means that you need to keep your eye on the next question coming, not just the question that you're doing at the moment. So for example, we know this is question number one and we're trying to find question number two. Now question number two might be not given. And if it's not given, many students read the whole passage to try to find it. Well, don't do that because question number two, the answer must come between number one and number three. It cannot come after. So don't waste time trying to find the true false not given. 
Keep your eye on the next question as well. Remember the content of the next question so that when you try to find question number two, you are not going to read too far. That will save you a lot of time in your reading test because you know reading is really difficult in IELTS because of the time limit. So saving time is very important. Keep your eye on the next question. The answers come in order. Remember it, it will help you. Let's have a look at tip number eight. The next tip. Remember the meaning of false and no. Many students think that the meaning of false and no is that the information does not match. That is not the meaning. Don't try to think that it's about matching. The meaning of false and no is that the information is opposite. So it contradicts. And you need to remember that and keep your eye on that. So it's about an opposite or contradictory meaning. Tip number nine. If the question in your reading test is true, false, not given, you must remember to write true or false or not given on your answer sheet. You can't write yes or no. So if the answer is true and you write yes instead, the answer is wrong. And again, if the answer is false, but you have written no, then the answer is wrong again. So please make sure you remember if you're answering true, false, not given, or yes, no, not given, and write the correct word on your answer sheet. Tip number 10, the last tip. This is a common question many students ask me, and that is, can I write a letter instead of a word for your answer? So if your answer is true, can you write only T. Well, yes, you can. If you have T, it still means true and IELTS will give you a correct answer for that one point. But if your writing is not clear, please don't take a risk. It would be easier to write the word. So just make sure that your answer is easy to read. Now, before we finish, here's your homework. Um, this is a true, false, not given question. This is the information in the passage. By the second half of the 17th century, coffee had found its way to Europe. And here is the question for your homework. Coffee arrived in Europe after the 17th century. I want you to decide, is it true, false or not given? Now I'm going to give you some links. I will give you a link to find the answer to your homework. I will give you a link so you can practice more true, false, not given and yes, no, not given questions for free and also links to other IELTS lessons. Well, I hope that was useful for you. If you did find it useful, please press like. If you have any questions, just post them for me. See you soon.